And this brings us to, in the name of the king, a dungeon siege tale, the last of the Uva Boll films that I'll be reviewing for this feature. There are other Uva Boll films based on games such as Far Cry and the sequels to Blood Rain, as well as the sequel to this movie, but these were direct to video, and I'm only covering theatrically released movies in this feature. It's been a bumpy ride watching Uva Boll films. House of the Dead sucked ass. Alone in the Dark was mediocre, but not terrible. Blood Rain was one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and Postal was actually kind of good. In a lot of ways, In the Name of the King has a lot in common with Blood Rain. For one, it's based on a fantasy game and takes place in a fantasy medieval setting. For another, like Blood Rain, this movie boasts an impressive cast. You got Jason Statham, Lily Sobieski, John Rhys Davis, Ron Perlman, Kristana Loken, again, Ray Liotta, and Burt Reynolds. Well, damn, this movie should be good, right? Well, not quite. The kindest thing I could say about the film is that it's an admirable effort, but unfortunately, it doesn't quite hit the mark. Firstly, since the cast is so impressive, let me tackle that. Most of the actors do a good job in their roles, but the problem is that, once again, the director, who lets each actor sort of do their own thing. While many actors who have worked with him have praised Uva Ball for the sort of hands-off, easy-going approach, it leads to drastically different acting styles clashing with each other, leading to an overall lack of cohesion in the film. Statham, Reynolds, Sobieski, and Perlman play the roles straight and serious, while Ray Liotta, who plays the main villain, and Will Sanderson, who plays the secondary villain, are over-the-top and campy. It would work in some cases, but so much of the movie presents itself as dropped-in serious that it's hard to accept Ray Liotta's hammy performance. Uva Bull really should have just told him to knock it off and tone it down like 40 notches. And he probably also should have not hired Will Sanderson, who sucked in House of the Dead, and he sucks again here. Another problem is the plot. The movie takes place in the Kingdom of Ebb. Burt Reynolds is the king, Con Reed, Ray Liotta is his magician, who is secretly working against him to take over the kingdom, who is in collusion with his nephew. Jason Statham plays a man known only as Farmer, who is trying to lead a quiet life of toil with his family, but gets sucked into the struggle between the kingdom and the orc-like Krug, who seem to be an invading force, but are actually magically controlled by the evil wizard Galleon. The plot is pretty standard fantasy stuff. I don't know how based off of the Dungeon Siege games this is, but... I've never played any of them, but it's a serviceable story, despite being highly derivative. The issue is, the movie is far too long and has a false climax after false climax, to the point where I felt fatigued watching it by the end. The action scenes are way too over the top for a sword and arrow type of movie. In the big climactic battle near the end of the film, there are even ninjas bouncing around in the forest, because seriously, why not, right? Farmer bounces around on his foe's heads and takes out scores of them with a boomerang, and when he fights the evil wizard at the end of the movie, the villain's best attack is to throw thousands of books at him and a big swirling tornado. The movie has a few twists, which are decent enough, but it's hard to care when the entire thing drags on and on. It's in badly in need of a good cutting by about 20 minutes or so. Another weird thing is the soundtrack, which is the first way I ever heard of the film. And a lot of my favorite bands are on it, such as Blind Guardian, who do the main theme, and there's also Hammerfall, Nightwish, Amorphous, Dream Theater, Avantasia, Disturbed, Pantera. Well, that's actually pretty awesome, right? Well, firstly, even though the CD was sold as an original soundtrack, none of the songs are new, just taken from the band's back catalogs, and most of the mo songs do not appear in the film at all, other than at the end credits. It's not a huge criticism, because having Pantera blasting as a bunch of knights go into battle can actually be pretty distracting, but the soundtrack was heavily marketed as a selling point to the movie. It seemed almost like a bait-and-switch. Well, I've criticized the movie quite a lot, some would say harshly, but the fact is, as flawed as it is, it isn't unenjoyable. And though it is overlong, derivative, and not entirely memorable, it's generally an inoffensive movie that tries hard to be fun and sometimes succeeds. Uwe Boll himself has said that his favorite two video game adaptation that he's done are Postal and this movie, and I have to agree with him, though I think Postal was better because it was more concise and met its goals better. In the name of the King of Dungeon Siege Tale gets a 6 out of a possible 10. Maybe Uwe Boll will continue to be a modern-day Ed Wood, or maybe this movie, along with Postal and some of his recent non-video game work, or a sign that he's turning things around and improving.
Or maybe it's a fluke, who knows.